Set the calculator. Where are we going? Clear? Number eight. Number eight. Is it number eight? Five, six, five, six. I'm hearing five, six, eight. Who is it? Is it a test or an interval? Is it a test or an interval? No, there's not a test. It's an interval. Number eight. Interval, right? I don't know. How, wait a minute. Construct the 90% what? Interval. Right? <laughs> Confidence <laughs> interval. True, right, everyone? Yeah. No, but this can happen. You're like, I don't know. This is what I'm going to talk about. You go, it says confidence interval. We're looking for interval. All right. So we're going to go in here. I don't see it yet. There it is. And when it's a T interval. We're going to use a T interval. All right. Now, am I using data? That would mean they gave me data out of the textbook, and I got to hit all the end of the date, end of the data in L1. No, I already have my statistics, right? So I'll make sure that's highlighted. And all this pops up. Okay, what was X bar? Okay, 0.167. Okay, 0.167. That is a high blood alcohol con concentration. What's that sex? 0.01. Is the mean. Then again, the fatal crashes. This is 51. What's confidence level? 90. 0.90. 0 0.90, which is 0.9, and I hit calculate. Alright, what is it? This time I think I'll go out to three places. 0.165. 169. Boom. 0.164.169. Alright. Hey, uh. Anybody want to interpret that? Yep. With 90% confidence. Okay, with 90% confidence. The population mean is between. With the population mean. Ah, I love it. Not the sample mean. We know about sample mean. The population mean. For. is between. And then when you come up with the fatal, fatal accidents, where alcohol is involved. We don't need to write all those stuff, right? Like That's right. Is between uh, 0.165 and 0.169. You got it. Hey, what do you say? We don't have to write what? All he wanted to know if you want to put more wording. You can if you want. You want to be like, oh, the people, good point, Tim. Oh, the blah, blah, blah. You go back to it. Hey, I'll be honest, though. If you were taking like an advanced placement exam, or, you know, they put a bunch of graders out in, like, Colorado and they sit there for a week and grade all exams, I would be like, yes, write that. You follow me? Yes. I would be, like, encouraging you to write that because someone want to hear about all that stuff. But here we're good with 90% comments, population mean. What's important to me is we're talking about not the sample mean, the what? Population mean. Yeah, we're talking about, you know, lots and lots and lots of people here. And uh, in the end, when you go, I still don't know what this means. What we're saying is that if I took a hundred more of these samples, all right, this is what I mean. Ninety out of a hundred of them would come up with an X bar between these two numbers. That's what it means. So if you really want to know what that means, you can even write that as an interpretation. If I did one hundred more samples, just like this, ninety out of a hundred of them would get a X bar that came out to be between this number and this number. That's what I'm saying. So we're really, really confident it's in here. Excellent. Okay, so when we did 9.1 and we were constructing the, the, um, the percentage, and on the calculator we did 1 minus um, whatever prop Z. Yeah. So why do we. Didn't have to do it here, did we? we did. It's a different check. I know. You do, now you're doing this thing, right? You do not want to. No, when we were on. on so letter B, uh -huh. when we did that from in 9.1, we just used a technology degree. Yeah, right, right, but we, but we went through a, a different Yeah, we looked, place we did the calculus. formula first. Oh, that? absolutely, you're right. It was a one proportions the interval. Now this is for means, it isn't a proportion. Okay. okay. And it's, it, what they, we call it a T interval, right? Because you remember with mean, Mr. T, means we're going to use T. Okay. So very good point. Hey, just, hey, in your notes, 9.1, who is the cool, cool button? It was really letter A, but in 9.2 with these means, the cool button was number eight. Right. Right. Cool. 9.2 is the deal with population. Right. right.
9.2 the human population. Mean. We think T. It's a very good point. Hey, uh, D. Everyone, I bet you know how to get the margin of error, but use your favorite way. Randy, use your favorite way. <laughs> Everyone, use your favorite way to get it. Let's see what we all get. The margin of error. I'll draw a picture. I'm going to draw a picture. I'm a picture person. Oh, there's the interval. There's the, who's in the middle of the interval? 1.167. I just need that part. One side. That's my margin of error. Bam. Very small. That's really small. Hey, uh, let me ask it again. Hey, everyone, if we did another poll, study, with the same level of confidence, and we wanted to decrease the margin of error, what would I do? Increase the sample size. Question? Um, I love it. I'm going to put that. You can just write this, but she's right. She goes, you always put a plus or minus. Even, even the literature that you read, you read this stuff on the internet, they put that plus or minus there as well. Right? Very good. Hey, uh, what should I do if I wanted to uh, decrease the margin of error and do another study like this, same level of confidence? Increase, increase the size. sample size. Jack up N, right? <coughs> You're going to need more of these fatal accidents randomly to report and come up with your statistic. Can I erase? Can I erase? Rocking and rolling, everyone. Um, watching it. Hey, Eleanor, some good practice problems in that book as we do this stuff. I do want to point out 9.1, Brianna, remember when we did this like letter F, determine the sample size thing? When you practice a problem out of the book, if they say there was no prior estimate, that just means for your P hat, use 0.5. Okay? Has everyone got that? When you, there's good practice problems in the book, right? I mean, do them. But when they go ahead, there was no prior estimate, and you're trying to do your, oh, determine the sample size, just use P hat at 0.5. Which means, what would Q hat be, Michael? P hat 0.5, then Q hat will be a 0.5. Alright, 10.1. This is just intro to hypothesis test. So I'm going to read something from the book, and you're going to help me just set up the hypothesis test. It'll be quick, but let me read it to you. I'm in 10.1. All right, which one's good? Um, okay, this is number 17. It's in 10.1. I need you to set up a hypothesis test. Well, we might as well get it ready. When you set it up, you put the H naught and you put the H1, right? Yeah, we're going to set this thing up. But you've got to determine whether you're going to use mu or the rho, okay? Rho looks like P. Some students call it a P. That's fine. <coughs> According to the National Association of Home Builders, the mean price of an existing single-family home in 2009 was 218600 All right. Let me write that number down. 218000 600. That was the mean value of a home in the year 2009. Uh, which symbol? Yeah. Man, you're good. I don't see a percentage, do you? Right. Equals. This is the same letter. This is the same number. What goes here? You say, Professor Mesh, you've got to continue to read. Okay, let me continue reading. The next sentence says, a real estate broker believes that because of the recent credit crunch, the mean price has decreased since then. Okay. That dictates the whole test. We don't have to do this test. They just wanted to set us up. There's something else they wanted you to do on this problem. Everyone, we need you to explain what a type 1 error is. Alright. Uh, can I ask you a question? Oh, good, Art. Uh, would it be okay, like on type 1 error and type 2 error, we just explain the way you explain it? Because in the book, they wrote a big love story. Absolutely. Love story. And I love his point. He goes, <laughs> he did it like a love story. He's right. So, Art, no, you do not have to do it like the love story like the other book. Uh, what would you say here? And just keep it nice and simple for the class. Watch okay, this. the 
HO is true, but right. the uh, researcher rejects it. Perfect, that works. Now, and I'm going to put a little phrase here, hot, because hasn't been hot out lately. Mm -hmm. That's just my, this is my little phrase, hot, just to help you remember this. Type 1 error. i got to write this in words, though. All right, hot. I'm saying, explain what a type 1 error means, hot. What do I mean? Well, the no hypothesis is true. It's actually true. This is what Art was saying. And the researcher, in this case, it was a real estate broker, but I'll just say, you know, the real estate broker, he or she is a, re is a researcher. The researcher, you know, mistakenly did what? Rejects it. Rejects it. Done. That's what's going on. That's what it would mean to make a type 1 error. It's not a big deal, but when it happens, students are always curious about this stuff. They always go, what's the error? It can be a number of things, a lurking variable and stuff. Stuff you're not aware of. I always say gossip. Remember gossip at the brewery? He kept making type 1 errors. He was no, he knew something was up. He's like, what's going on here? Well, he was using the Z distribution. He had to invent this T distribution for the small sample sizes dealing with means. He kept making type 1 errors. Right? He kept what? He kept thinking, oh, I was rejecting this. Right? He was mistakenly rejecting what he had. He had a good quality beer there. Right? He's like, what's going on? No, I possibly was sure. All right, can I race? Mm -hmm. That's a good phrase to help you remember because it says HO, that means HO what? True, and then you made a mistake. What would be the mistake? Well, I guess I rejected it, right? Cool. All right, perfect. We've got time for two more problems. 10.2, 10.3. I would I like to do 10.3 first because I like to deal with means for our start. <laughs> so let's do it the one with means. So 10.3. Then we'll finish up with 10.2. And then for you, I'll talk about that small sample dot. Oh, no, uh, it was me who asked about that. We can talk about that at the end. So if you asked a 10.1 question, is it just going to be just like that? Like yeah, 10.1 is a funny section. Like, not every stat book does this where they just do an introduction to hypothesis tests. It's kind of short, sweet. They just want to make sure you know how to set them up, right? And then be able to interpret that. So that's all we're doing in that section. You bet. That's it. Are we going to have to explain type 2 error also? No, just type 1 error. Oh. Type 2 error would be this, the opposite, Mia, right. if you're curious. And you go, what would that be? Oh, the H1 would be true. <laughs> and they mistakenly. Do not reject the no. <laughs> but I will. I like type 1 error. I like to hit on that. All right, this is 10-3. Everyone, I'm going to do uh, number 15. This was effects of alcohol on the brain. Um, okay, more with alcohol. Okay. This. What's interesting in this problem, everyone, they start out, they get a sample size, you know, they just want to measure the effect of alcohol in a certain region of the brain. And uh, their sample size, I'm going to hit it right away, was this. So I'm sure that alarms a lot of people. It's the first thing you spot in this problem. I mean, there we are, we're sitting with 12, and we're like, hold up, this is means sample size has to be greater than equal to 30, right? But I'm going to go further down this word problem because it's this law. And they make this statement, all right? And they said that it was approximately normal, all right? Analysis of the sample data revealed that the volume is approximately normal. So by them saying that, all right, analysis of the data said it's already approximately normal, we're okay with this check. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're okay that this isn't greater than equal to 30. So when we do this problem, I do want to point out when we do our verify requirements, we're okay with because of that statement. All right? It was way down the word problem though, Brianna. They said, an analysis of the sample data revealed that this certain volume is approximately normal and they gave a sample size and the standard deviation. Cool. So when it's when they say it's approximately normal, then you don't have to do the checks because they're telling you that it is. Yeah, they already checked it out for you. Okay. You're right. Uh, sample size wouldn't have to be greater than equal to 30. Okay. It could be like in this case, 12. Okay. So very good question. This is what means. So I'm, let me give you all the numbers they get from this problem, Evan. So they got this is the effects of alcohol on the brain. Let's see. The X bar is 8.1 out. That's the sample mean, right? The standard deviation, the sample standard deviation is 0.7. All right. And I'm going to change colors. What's the alpha level? Uh, 
All right, this is totally different. I pull up this yellow chalk, right? They call this the level significance. 1%. See, usually when you get in this field with, you know, things like this, they like to be very, 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 very serious about this. And they consider anything less than 1% or rare or unusual. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking at here. Anything less than 1% is unusual. All right? So now, anything else? Well, you've got to set up your hypothesis test. All right? What else do we have to do? Verify our requirements? Mm -hmm. Then we're going to justify our results by doing two things. We're going to do the classical approach. And the p-value approach. <coughs> and then after that one, we are going to make sure we state our conclusion. Sound good? All right. Now, everyone, here comes that first sentence. They want to determine whether or not they said it in the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis, they're stating in the first sentence, because they always put that first, is 9.02 cubic centimeters. 9.0 cubic centimeters. So that's our status quo. So when I set up this, so when this is means, right? Mm -hmm. 9.02, this is a portion of the brain. And you're talking about volume, so that's why it's cubic centimeters. It's just a certain portion of the brain, all right, that they were looking at and studying. But they said the population, you know, mean was 9.02 cubic centimeters. So that's a mu, right? All right. If you want to put cubic centimeters, you can. Um, yeah, but what did these researchers believe? All right, they wanted to determine whether it was less than this. They wanted to determine, the research wanted to determine whether it was less than that volume of 